Hello everyone, my name is Mr. Orange and welcome to another brand new video of the Grand Tour game. So we have episode 12 of season 3 and the cars that they're gonna drive in today's episode are going to be the Lancia, a couple of Porsches and also a suitcase. This is going to be pretty interesting, so yeah, we're gonna play from the start like always and I hope you guys will enjoy this episode of the Grand Tour game, so yeah, let's begin! Thank you, and coming up in this week's show, James stands next to a car, Richard pulls a face, and some Toblerone falls over. It is, um, it is an action-packed show, but we start with Lancia. I've said many times that over the last hundred years, no one has made more truly exciting cars. There was the Integrale and the Stratos and the Fulvia and the O37. The list goes on and on. And yet all they make today is a steaming pile of odour called the Ypsilon. Look at it. <laughs> I would rather have a maggot-infested wound than drive one of those. <laughs> Honestly, it makes me sad that they've been reduced to making that, and it turns out I'm not the only one. There's a man in Italy called Eugenio Amos who looked at the old Delta Integrale and found himself wondering. What would it be like if Lancia made it today? How would it feel? How would it go? And then he stopped wondering and decided to find out. This is what he came up with. The engine is a 16 valve, two litre turbo, as it was before, but it has new rods, new pistons, a new turbocharger, and a lot of electronic tweaking. So now it develops 330 horsepower. Damn, I love this car. This is a beautiful Lancia. This is amazing. They still make them? Precisely because it isn't an Audi. And I love it because someone cared enough to make it and I love it most of all because it's giving me my youth back same for me like this ah. is a very amazing classic car even in uh, group B or was the car in group B I'm not really sure but uh it is a really beautiful car if I had to go with my first car this would have been my car like wow it's so beautiful I'm surprised that they still make them because I thought that it's like the end of this uh, era because like today, Lantia makes some interesting vehicles, but oh, nothing too amazing. I think they only make like I think I'm not really sure if they make SUVs. They just make some 
boring, compact vehicles, which is really sad for a company who made really amazing rally vehicles back in the day. Like this car. That's 140 more than you got in the old car. And there's more good news. Most of the body panels and suspension components are now made from either aluminium or carbon fiber. And there are two advantages to that. Number one, they won't rust. And number two, they're light. And because of all this work, this car is pretty quick. There's a fair bit of period turbo lag, as you can hear. <laughs> but when it gets on song, <laughs> this car flies like a a Go rocket literally okay let's hit a quick lap time yeah i'm surprised that this car also has a lot of turbo lag it's a uh <laughs> that's a little bit not a good thing but at the same time people like turbo lag yes, on some of their vehicles scary through here. yes again scary corner oh but we did fantastic. it indeed it was fantastic so we have to hit it under 58 seconds. This is going to be an interesting time that we're going to try to hit with this beautifully right, designed straight. Lancia. So now, stop here. Oh, very, very quickly here. Two yes. More. Okay, and now speed up. Twin turbos in a Lancia. And there's being, this brings me back to the good old, good old days. Hello. And also, the engine does sound not too bad. It's really, really nice. Okay, a little drift here on this corner. Can we hit a better time? And uh, now we beautiful. Go into the really fast bit. Yes, let's go into that fast bit. Oh, uh, whoop de doo. I didn't meant to hit, did that. I, yeah, I haven't meant to do that. But dang, guys, like even the paint job on this car is quite not bad but I would like maybe I would like to have maybe the red color the original uh, Lancia Delta integral oh uh, color but the green also kind of fits it at the same time it's not too bad it's also a four-door drive carefully well, I'm, well I'm not gonna drive carefully with this car it's all about the speed or maybe not I can just hit that uh, fence that could be also a thing that I could hit Okay, so we have 50 seconds left. Yeah, there's no way that we can hit a better time. And this is a really enjoyable car. I'm also kind of curious, what is the price of this vehicle like? I'm gonna guess that it, that it costs like maybe 30 or 40 thousand dollars, something somewhere like that, like for a little compact, uh, yeah, power <laughs> thing, a little compact uh, car. I bet it's something like 20,000 or 30,000. If it's like 50 or 60,000, that's just an unbelievable price for that little, little hatchback. Is it a hatchback or is it not? Because for me, it looks like a hatchback. Maybe it is. Maybe I'm just being dumb. <laughs> it's a hatchback. Okay, so here we are, and there it is. It does not to 60 in four seconds. And flat out, it'll be doing more than 160 miles an hour. The best thing, though, is that all the understeer you got in the original car has been replaced with an extraordinary amount of grip and neutrality. You have got to love the Italians, haven't you? I mean, Eugenio said a lot of the stuff in here wasn't working because if it was working, then it would be an Audi. <laughs> there is, however, one problem. It costs a quarter of a million pounds. Really? A quarter of a million? Integrally, here we go. Didn't bother filming it, but we haven't got the time. Uh, oh. <laughs> yeah. now, well, no, look at it this way. It's actually the same speed as a BMW M2.
I think I can also claim quite reasonably that the old Mercedes A45 would go around the track faster than that. Yeah, and be a hell of a lot cheaper. Yes, but, fact. but what, what? everything on a Mercedes would work. And who wants that? Be dull. Well, <laughs> it's, what you, it's what Eugenio was saying. You don't want German stuff. You aren't in the Italian frame of mind, you oh, two. Oh, we're not. No, you're not. That's okay. the trouble. Has well, anyone here got oh, an Italian God. car? No, they're not here, are they? They didn't make it. <laughs> It's raining. Did you... Yes, that is a good point, actually. It's also very windy, and before the tent blows away, we should get on. We should. Yeah. We must move on. Yeah, let's move it on. Now, earlier on, Jeremy was listing all the wonderful and remarkable cars that Lancia have made over the years. But let's not forget, Porsche has also made some rather remarkable cars. Absolutely. There was the 911. There was another sort of 911. <laughs> there was a slightly different 911 that was green. Yes, 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 I know. But this year marks the 50th anniversary of what I think must be the greatest Porsche of them all. Is it a 911? No. It's called the Porsche 917. And even if you have no interest in motorsport, you'll most likely recognize this machine because it's quite possibly the most iconic racing car ever created. The first thing you need to know is that although the 917 looks like a big, wide car, actually, it isn't. Ow. I'm in. God, it's tiny. Damn, I do really like the shape of this oh, car. Right. Look at the tires on that thing. Porsche These are is huge. the most successful car maker ever to race at Le Mans. They have 19 victories to their name. But this is the car that started it all. This is the car that gave them that all-important first win. That's, that's oh, just what? impressive. Look at this thing. I really love the front of it. Like, everything is so smooth on it. If there's any like sharp edges or anything like that, it's just one, one piece of metal. That's all I'm gonna say. It's just one beautiful the flat the piece of metal. On the way to another crushing victory, it would go through the speed traps at over 241 miles an hour, a record that stood for more than 20 years. And in that same race, it was so fast it would cover a total of 3,350 miles. A distance record that would stand until 2010. That's just crazy. That's Lava just breaks. crazy numbers. Also, a really unbelievable vehicle that goes really fast, but we're not gonna get especially a good time on this. No, how do we? Need oh, come on! We were two seconds short. Only two seconds. Come on, speed up. This is just brilliant. Oh, it is. Okay. Doing a little bit better. Come on, speed up, you beautiful Porsche. We can get a much better, better time on that. This is quite a complicated one. Yes, it is. Quite complicated. I'm still going to press the gas. I'm not going to break once. Well, maybe at least a couple of times, but... Oh, it shouldn't feel so good, but it does. Uh, but... <laughs> what? What did you say, James May? <laughs> That was a little bit of a weird uh, thing that he said there, but uh, never mind. Oh man, this car goes so fast to these corners, <laughs> and he's really enjoying it. I can tell that by his laugh. Okay, yeah, that's going to be a much better time. Come on, catch up. We're getting there. Come on. Oh, it's going to be so close. <laughs> yes, we did it. Perfect. That's a be that's a much better improvement. We got a gold on that. <laughs> the bracket is just astonishing. Imagine this for a 24-hour race. Even though it's a 50-year-old car, the 917 is fast by the standards of any decade. 
0 to 60, 2.7 seconds. Top speed, 224 miles an hour. Damn, and this car is made 50 years ago, and this car is still breaking, like, records and all that. Impressive. Okay, so... Come on. Keep that speed up. And now we're going a different way through the track. Which is gonna mess it around a little bit of my mind. I'm not gonna say that it's gonna mess it around with my mind, but uh, it's kinda, it kind of is, because now we're gonna go the other way. Okay, keep up the speed. Let's go a little faster. Yeah, a little drift here. Keep drifting, my Porsche. Just keep drifting. Oh yes. Built without compromise, using the absolute bare minimum of materials. So, for example, this bodywork, which is very close to my head, it's fiberglass. 1.2 millimeters thick, that's it. Now in front of me, I have a big rev counter, an oil temperature gauge, and an oil pressure gauge. That's all the information you get. If those are reading correctly, that means the engine isn't gonna blow up, and that means you can pin it. Okay, let's go yeah. again. Oh no, we're going again with the fizz. Okay, let's see if we can uh, hit it some fizz. So you have to keep it at the track. Come on, get as much fizz. A little drift here. Okay, do not go out of the track, because that's gonna, again, that's gonna increase our proper, yeah, just our chance of winning. And getting a goal on this. Perfect. Very nicely through the corners. Those tires actually do help us a lot, because if there were like smaller, like an inch smaller or something like that, I think uh, the grip would have not been good on the on this uh, car. Hey, I have been clever. Yes, you are, May. A little drift. Oh no! There goes our fizz. Come on. Oh, okay. Come on. We can still do this. Yes. Perfect. Give me my fizz. There we go, we did it, we did it. Look like a moron. Yes, I'm a moron, of course I am. I drive like a moron, that's for sure. The 12-cylinder engine produces 621 horsepower, which is modest by the standards of today's road-going hypercars. But this thing weighs just 800 kilograms. As a result, the power to weight is off the scale. Bloody hell, this is special. What's more amazing than that, actually, is that this car exists at all, because its gestation was, let's say, it was quite difficult. The story of its birth starts in 1968, when the governing body for sports car racing, Alarmed that the top-end unregulated prototype cars were becoming too fast, too expensive, and too dangerous, decreed that such machines should have engines no larger than three liters. However, the governing body also said that if you could build 25 road-going versions of your racing car, that engine limit would be raised to five liters. Although, secretly, they knew that no small sports car manufacturer could actually afford to do that. I didn't think there'd be any takers. The ragtag Porsche team just made the deadline, and the motorsport inspectors gave the road cars the sign-off, presumably not inspected them too closely, or they would have noticed that most of them had truck axles. Pierre hoped for a big win at the 1969 Le Mans race, but it was a disaster. One of the privately entered cars crashed on lap one, killing its driver. The others broke down as the race wore on, until just one remained, driven by this man, British driver Dickie Atwood. Difficult would be uh, putting it mildly. Um, uh, Life-threatening could be another one. Um, right. It was um, a monster. It was made for speed, like a bullet to go through the air, 
but the, uh, there wasn't enough pressure on the bodywork to keep it on the ground. And now, since the legend is celebrating its 50th birthday, I think it deserves a fun day out. So I thought, why don't we put Mr. Dickie Atwood back in it to stretch its legs a bit and spice things up? And whilst he's there, let's see how the old legend, I mean the car, stacks up against a modern Porsche. Specifically this Porsche, the 911 GT2 RS. The biggest gun in Porsche's current arsenal. Now, attentive viewers will have noticed that I'm not actually driving, and that's because I've decided to do this properly. We're going to have old Porsche Le Mans winning racing driver versus young Porsche Le Mans winning racing driver, because this is Neil Yarny, and he won for Porsche in 2016 in the 919. To be honest, he's also probably a bit better at this than I am. Okay, this is going to be quite an interesting Go. new versus old. This is going to be interesting. Let's see if we can catch up. I think oh, we can. That's interesting. Yes. I'm not really sure if we can catch up to that uh, Porsche. But we are somehow. Oh, and I just... Oh my god, I just hit him so hard. <laughs> I'm sorry. I didn't meant to hear, uh, hit him. I drifted a little bit too hard on that corner. And I sort of... Like, sort of span out. But there we go. We're in first place. Damn, look at this beautiful paint job on this Porsche. Before, Porsches had like these beautiful silver colors and a couple of red ones, a couple of like yellow Porsches. But now, I kind of like the blue on this Porsche. It kind of fits it. It's like a little... Oh, yes! A little Edison looking Porsche, but uh, except this, yeah, this. I bet this car has a lot of horsepower. I don't know how much. But I think between 600 and 500, I'm gonna guess. Also, the license plate on this uh, vehicle is 911 GB. It's 911 Great Britain. Okay, so we have two laps. So uh, let's see how we're gonna do on our second lap. Okay, so this is going to be our final lap. Yeah, there's no way he can catch up. He is quite far yes, from us. Right. Okay, a little drift here, whoop de doo getting a couple of signs. Wow, this, this car is climbing 150 miles on this, on this straight part. Really impressive. And 140 miles. Let this car go. The new Porsches are really amazing, like from handling and everything like that. And also kept the, st the same style as like in every single Porsche. Like, it's a rear engine vehicle, or yeah, it's still a rear engine vehicle, like always, that Porsche has, Porsche has does. I'm not really sure if Porsche ever made a uh, front engine vehicle, but I think they actually did with yeah, a couple of Porsches. I think three of them. I think it was the 944 and a couple of other Porsches, but yeah. There you go, we won. So you see, James, some old men can drive fast. <laughs> Just saying. Anyway, let's move it on, shall we? Yep, let's move it on. Um, as you would probably imagine, we have to travel a lot to make this show. I mean, just in making this series alone, we have been to Colombia, Detroit, Las Vegas, Scotland, Tbilisi, Baku, Istanbul, Helsinki and Chongqing. Mongolia, Hong Kong, Florida, Spain, France, Italy. Switzerland. That's just to make 13 programs. Yeah, and we're not making that up. We genuinely have been that far. Yes. And that means we have to go through a lot of airports, and almost all of them. Drivers mad for a number of small reasons, and one big one. Yeah, you. What? <laughs> well, you. We have to travel with you everywhere, and you never stop ranting about it. Well, I do a little bit of that, yeah. A little bit? Yeah. The first 20 minutes of the film we're about to see are just rants before we even get to the point. Yeah, that is true, but it's worth it, as you shall see. This is London Stansted Airport, which is located nowhere near London. I came here on a train, 2,000 people on it, no security at all. Going on an aeroplane, we well, we'll do this. Okay, so, oh no, it's one of these again. 
Oh, we have to like rotate it. Oh, god damn it. Okay, so this one goes here. You go something like that. Okay, this is going to be interesting again. Okay, so you go here, the charger. And I guess this goes here, I think. I'm not really sure. I don't know what I'm doing. Okay, there you go. I'm doing the right thing. Kinda. Okay, and then you go here. Okay, I'm doing something right. Okay. Uh, there we go. There's still something wrong. Oh, come on. One more thing. Where's the last thing? Oh, come on. There we go. We did it. Perfect. Wow. Okay. So, uh, 45 seconds. And then, of course... Is your bag gonna be well, what does he special, have in his sir? bag? I, I think I saw a knife and a couple of other yeah, contraband. You You've been through an x-ray machine. If you go to a hospital and you x-ray somebody's leg, okay? You say, right, it's not broken, I can see that. But let's just cut your flesh open to make sure. It's, it's, no, it's been x-rayed. Why are they looking at it again? Oh, here we go. Yep, salt. Self-raising flour. Normal flour. Baking powder. Talcum powder. That's from an athlete's foot. I put them in clear bags every single airport. You go through anywhere in the world. Why are they so interested in my condiments and medical necessities? I don't I mean, know, mate. And then you're out of security and straight into a shop, which wouldn't be so bad if it sold something you actually wanted, like bog roll or cat food. But no, all they sell is perfume. Why do they think when you get to an airport, all oh, right, I've suddenly overcome with a need to smell like Victoria Beckham. Then you've got the adverts. Look at that half wit. What is it? Oh, we have to take a picture. Come on. Where, uh, come on. Where is he? Where's that damn bastard? Oh, come on. Really? You got to be kidding me. There you go. I got him. Aw. There's no way I could have got that picture. I'm going to do that again. It's just a little bit weird. I, I backed out and for some reason they took the picture. Yeah, look at look at that damn bastard. Come on. I almost had it. Come on, press the button. There we go. Much better time. And we got a gold. No sense. I can see now why James May volunteered not to be in this film. And finally, you get to the gate, which is so far from civilization, they're still using a dot matrix printer. We have explained to him that the walk has to be this long because aeroplanes are wide because they've got wings. But he can't seem to understand the concept. Look, you will admit that that was a long walk, yes? I don't yeah. care what the reason is, it's a long walk. It is quite a stretch, yes. Which is why we decided to address the problem. Shut him up. So, here we are, arriving at the airport again, with what looks like normal hand luggage. OK, what I have here, as you can see, is a perfectly ordinary wheeled suitcase. If I hold the handle away, it will fit in an overhead locker. However, if I lay it down like so, you can see it's starting to look like a car. Not really, mate. No, it is. It will look even more like a car when I have completed the build and then... You heard that? A solid click, like an M16 rifle bolt. This is my accelerator, my brake. And then I simply sit it on it, being quite careful to keep that away from my plums. And I am ready to go. So where's yours? Here. Zip. There. Laptop. Yeah. Put it on the floor. Wheeled laptop. Oh, yeah. Yeah, but, oh, I see you standing on it. Yeah. And I'm off. So where's your luggage? In my pocket. I got. Pants, toothbrush, everything I need. I'm good to go. I mean, that does look a bit dangerous. It is. <laughs> That's why I'm wearing all these pads. Right, are we ready then to revolutionise air travel? Yeah, the worst bit of our every working day is about to get better. Let's do this. Another advantage of this, I am tall. I reckon I'm 5'11 on this. Yeah, there's been a bit of a role reversal. It's good. I'm going to be honest with you. In a matter of moments, we arrived at the check-in. No. no way. We're riding on a piece of luggage. Hello, oh, this, this is so trip. weird. Oh, my God. <laughs> I can see Clarkson feet. Hi there. Oh, my God. This feels so weird. Oh, my God. I'm riding on a piece what? of luggage. Whoop-de-doo. I'm sorry, Clarkson. 
made a little mistake. And the problem is I can't turn. So it's like in first person. Oh, why you're like that? Come on, we're almost there. Yes, we're at the checkout. Perfect. Just in time, move our piece of luggage. No, he's on it. I have it here. It's here. He's not normally that tall. Shut up. Into security. Oh god, my foot! Sorry, sorry, that sorry. Was my other foot. Yep, that happened. Thanks. But you never had a steering wheel go through customs before, have you? Ooh. Right, onwards. <laughs> this is just ridiculous and at the same time really funny. How does this little thing go like 33 miles per hour? How? It's tiny and I think it barely doesn't have any power Whoa. and it still somehow makes that much yeah, power and goes that fast. It's kind of impressive. Okay, just hitting uh some some slidey things. Or not some slight things, but we're just hitting some people's luggage and all that. But this is also quite an interesting map. We're, we are in the airport. Just uh, go going through, just minding our business. Going to our plane. And our drivable luggage. And I'm gonna hit you. This is just ridiculous. I can also see his feet wiggling about. And here we are. Just in time. I have nine wheels on my suitcase, not counting this one. Oh, that was that was <laughs> that was a bad mistake. Oh, <laughs> yeah, sorry. Soon we were motoring through the duty-free shops. Oh shit! No. Oh, hammer's gone. Ow! I meant He's that. Gone. <laughs> oh my god, this is so hilarious. Airport sec inter inter what is okay. Come on! Get the speed! Oh, we're going so fast. Spat at sp just the speed of light, that's all I'm gonna say. <laughs> the speed of light, 33 miles per hour on a piece of suitcase. I'm actually kind of curious, is it actually a real thing that you can actually buy on the on the website or maybe something like that? Because I think something like that actually exists in real life. Like a little, a little rideable luggage thing. I'm not really sure if it goes 33 miles per hour, but it goes maybe like 10 or 20 miles. But apart from that, that's just crazy. Crazy invention, Clarkson. But at the same time, really amazing. Okay, so 1 minute and 45 seconds. We can hit that, no problem. This little thing can do it. I hope so. <laughs> I do not want to crash into anything. Oh, little turn. I'm curious if they're going to use this uh, this map maybe on a, on, a, on a different... Maybe on a different, ve different vehicle. Because they have made this map. And I think it's maybe for other purpose. Apart from this uh, luggage vehicle. Okay, here we are. Passing by. Ooh, do not crash into that wall. I'm just, I'm still, I haven't even pressed the, the brake. We're still going. Oh, dearie me. Okay, I'm sorry for that little bounce that you, you that you had there. Come on, we're almost there. Yes. Nothing to see here. Nothing to see. Is it gate 88, Hammond? What? No, mate, it's this one. Where's the plane? And on that terrible disappointment, back to the tent. I enjoyed that one. That was quite hurty. Right, we know how his works. I, just, um, I fell out of a tunnel! Yeah, and I'm not interested in that. I want to know how yours works, is it? Well, it was exactly the same. It was cordless drill motor and some laptop batteries. Right, and you're claiming that has a top speed of 28 miles an hour. I was doing 28 when I fell out of the tunnel. Really? Yes, yeah. 28. I didn't believe him either, so when the airport quietened down a bit, mm. we organised a race. 
Right, here's Abby on my superb suitcase. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, that looks hilarious. Okay, that was a very slow start. And let's do this. Let's see if it, if this thing can hit 28 miles per hour, but uh, on my side it says 33, which is a little bit suspicious. Well, let's see if we can also, let's see if Abby can also do it at the same time. With, uh, with her little feet just jingling around. Okay, we're gonna go this way. Okay, go this way. Damn, this thing goes so slow. Like, for some people, it looks like this thing goes really fast, but, uh, it kind of is slow. <laughs> it's maybe, maybe a, um, maybe something else is faster than that. Maybe, like, a skateboard is, like, faster than this, but still. How does this work? I'm also surprised. So, he installed two drills and some laptop batteries, and that's how it works. Just from the power of the laptop battery batteries. Just a little bit suspicious. Like, those, like, laptop batteries are not really normally big. But, uh, I'm surprised that this thing even moves. So, we're almost there. Full throttle suitcase. Or suitcase. Okay, we're almost there. Come on! Hit that time! Oh, yes! Who here? Hands up. Who here would like to have one of those for going through an airport? Yes, yeah, so we're on to something. Yeah. So, those things you've created are a complete menace to the people using them mm -hmm. and everybody else in the airport. Uh, fair? Uh, yeah, yeah, yes, yes. Yes, that is fair, actually, now I come to think of it. And so, on that terrible disappointment, it's time to end. Now, next week, there's a Grand Tour special. We're attempting to cross the vast wilderness that is Mongolia using a car that we built, well, they built, ourselves. <laughs> See you then. Take care. Good night. Wow. I'm really excited for the next episode. So, they're going to be in Mongolia. And, uh, yeah. Okay, we did it, guys. Episode 12 completed with all gold medals. And yeah, it was a really funny episode. It just, uh, I, I just loved it. It was really funny, and uh, yeah, I'm really excited for the for the next episode. They're gonna be somewhere in Mongolia. They're gonna make their own vehicle, and uh, yeah, we're gonna see how that's gonna work out. But uh, yeah, we're gonna go into the menu and uh, yeah, end our video here. So. Uh, I hope you guys have enjoyed this uh, episode of, uh, yeah, I hope you guys have enjoyed episode 12. And, uh, yeah, guys, it would be amazing if you guys could all give this video a thumbs up. And I will see you guys all in the next video. Goodbye.